Ahava and blessings to all of you. I'm wishing you a beautiful Shabbat day. I love to come here and just be in community and send a message or give a message on this day, which is considered the holiest day. And Shabbat is an experience that we honor at the Desert Rose Mystery School as it brings us closer to the Divine Feminine Presence. And if we ex exile her out of our lives, we can come and bring her back in on this day. And so today I will be talking about um, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. And so this Gospel was found not in the Nag Hammadi Library. It was found in 1896. And the first version that was found was written in Coptic, and it was written more or less between the 4th and the 5th century. But then another version was found, and it was written in Greek, and that one was written in the 2nd century. So we're talking about a gospel that is very, very old, and at the same time that was written in a moment where there was no orthodoxy in Christianity. Christianity hadn't really been um, birthed as, it, as we see it in this moment, right? And so in the time of these writings, I would say after the death of Yeshua, about 300 years, there were different movements. There were different, there were, it wasn't Christianity, it was Christianities, right? There were different movements. There was the Thomasine Christianity, there was the Magdalene Christianity. It just depended on who had gone out to spread the word of Yeshua and all of them claiming that they had the true teachings of Yeshua. And so, when we look at the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, we call these Gospels the Gnostic Gospels. And I even call them the Gnostic Gospels so we understand what we're talking about, but they're really not Gnostic. When we think of Gnostic Christianity, these Gospels hold really nothing about Gnosticism. <laughs> you know, Gnosticism is a doctrine that believes in a demiurge, that is really, it really believes in duality, that this world isn't good, and I could go on. Beautiful teachings as well, but I'm not talking about my perception. I'm talking about what is written in these Gospels. And so if we think of the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, it's really interesting because it is the only Gospel where she is the main character. In all of the other Gospels, Yeshua is. But in this Gospel, she is the main character. And why? And so the gospel begins, it's missing the first six pages, the gospel begins with a post-resurrection scene where Yeshua is in his light body because he has transcended. He is in his light body speaking to the apostles. And he's basically saying, he gives a few teachings, be content at heart, right, um, as one of them. And he's basically saying, now it is time for you to go out and spread the word and spread the teachings. And so, and then he leaves and all of them enter into a state of panic. They are crying. They are scared for many reasons. And one of the reasons being is if they teach the teachings of Christ, will they be executed as well for these teachings? And so Mary Magdalene is the only one who isn't crying. And this is when the gospel becomes so interesting and so important because this is when she becomes the teacher. She is the teacher of the apostles because she is teaching them. And this is when her ministry really begins. And she's not crying because as Yeshua said, she was the only one who really understood his teachings to the core. So in that moment, she says, I am here to reveal mystery teachings to you. And all of them wanted to know, Peter said, please tell us the teachings that Yeshua Christ Messiah gave to you that we don't know because he loved you the most. And so she, she gave many teachings. She started talking about right the, 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 the soul's journey after we leave our bodies and also the soul's journey here on earth incarnated. Her gospel is about ascension. Her gospel is about purification. Her gospel is about the exaltation of the soul, right? Living in the kingdom, the kingdom, which Yeshua said was here, in a tree, in a flower, in the earth, in our relationships, in our relationship with ourselves. So when she reveals and starts to reveal these powerful teachings, there's a moment where the apostles get angry. Peter gets angry, Andrew gets angry, and say, this is impossible. 
these teachers teachings are absolutely crazy and we don't believe you we don't believe first that Yeshua would tell you and then a woman and Levi comes in and Levi says why are you doubting Mary Magdalene she started to cry because she didn't understand why they were treating her this way and Levi said don't doubt her for the Savior and this is how Yeshua is referred to the Savior the Savior loved her more than us so she is here to deliver these teachings and so this is really when she becomes the teacher right we know that her ministry we tend to think her ministry began in France right when she left her her hometown because she was probably going to be persecuted as well but her her ministry really began in that moment when post-resurrection Yeshua appears in this light body then he leaves and she is at the head of the mystery school giving these teachings and so the teaching that was difficult for some of the apostles to understand was about being content at heart which she later explained resting in silence and this is what I want us to take. Well, I want us to take a lot of things in this Shabbat week, and on the Shabbat day to go into the week, right? Um, faith, having faith and speaking our truth, even though maybe many people may not understand. But this teaching of resting in silence, and she says, I am now going to rest in silence, which means now I am totally allowing my soul to be the one who governs and speaks and takes the lead in my life. And this is the teaching on infinity. So to rest in silent and to be content in the heart is actually a portal. It's actually an inner journey to go down deep into the soul, the soul's journey, and find the point of infinity. And this is why Yeshua speaks in the, in the gospel, talks about the nature of matter. Yes, he says matter goes back to its origin, but the soul continues. But at the same time, Yeshua was saying, find your origin now. Find your infinity now. So in this space of infinity, and we know that when we really go deep in, there is more and more and more to discover. So in this space of infinity, this is where we rest in silence. Why do we rest in silence? Because now we know who we are. We know what our essence is, right? We know that the power of creation flows through us. And that power of creation flowing through us is infinite. And so that we are infinite love. We are infinite creation. We are infinite potential. Anything that we long for in the light has the potential to become because we are the vessels of light. And if we understand that we are the vessels of light in this incarnation, right? While we are in our humanity, we will rest in silence. And we will understand how to access our truth, not just the truth, but our truth of what we are here to express. And so on the Shabbat day, let's take these teachings. And there's so many in the Gospel of Mary, but let's take this particular teaching and I wanted to give you the whole story of that gospel and what happened to understand how this teaching was very challenging right because this teaching is about freedom and sovereignty true sovereignty soul sovereignty when we have soul sovereignty nothing can control us right and so the idea of being spiritually free and not bound was scary and so I'm wishing all of you a beautiful Shabbat day I would love to listen to your comments if you want to reflect or share anything and may we all be in peace in unity in beauty in divine union in expansion in goodness and in grace Ahava.